Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here, and I'm going to talk about the four, one, two, three, four principles of experimental design. So, of an experiment. The first one, ladies and gentlemen, here is control. Got to have control. Um, we got to have control of our experiment. And what control means is that we're just going to reduce the variation within our uh, experiment by making conditions as close as possible for all the groups that we have. So uh, sometimes we use an actual control group, like a placebo group, which I'll talk about just in a second, where we might give a drug to um, one group and not the other group just to see if the drug is even effective. That's a form of control. Another form of control is just to make sure that the conditions are the same. So if we're comparing two things like uh, Pepsi and Coke, we might make sure that the amount of Pepsi and Coke that they take is the same. We might make sure that they don't know which one's which. Any of those situations is controlling it so that we get a similar result as po or a similar um, comparison as possible for good results. So that's control. Within control, we can blind our individuals, which means we're not going to you know physically blind them, <laughs> but it means that we just make sure that they don't know what they're taking. So that way we can get good results. Again, in this Coke and Pepsi situation, we might give them um, a blank cup with no uh, mention of which one they're drinking so as to not skew to not uh, bias our results a placebo on that hand is a uh, you know we use placebos a lot in like uh, drug trials where we're gonna give a group a drug and then we're gonna give a group a pill that looks like the drug but basically just a sugar pill so this allows us to blind our individuals so they don't know which one they're taking and um, they might not have some um, you know, mental bias onto whether or not they feel better, okay? A double blind study is one where the administrator doesn't even know what they're giving. So the experimenter does, but the administrator doesn't, so that way they don't have bias in who they're giving the, uh, the, the treatment to. Uh, the second important thing, and probably the most important thing for an experiment, is that we randomly assign our participants into treatment groups. This is going to help us reduce our bias and it isn't really necessary for us to randomly select our individuals, although it might be. So it really depends on the situation. Uh, here's an example. Let's say we want to test a new drug on arthritis. We don't necessarily need to randomly choose a bunch of people in the hospital. What we really need is people with arthritis. So we could volunteer, we can ask for volunteers to be in this trial as long as they have arthritis. And if they have arthritis, then they're part of our uh, population. Then we randomly assign those people with arthritis into our treatment groups, and we should have a good study, okay? So we must randomly assign into treatments. Third, we need to be able to replicate our experiment. There's so many studies out there that are done that say, oh yeah, you know, hamburgers are good for your diet. Well, you know, has that study been even replicated? just because the study's done doesn't mean that it's a good study okay um a study must be done must be able to be replicated with different participants and done again with similar control and similar um environmental uh, uh impacts okay so or not impacts but environment the same environment so if we can replicate the study then it might be a pr it, it's probably a good experiment Lastly, we'll look at blocking. Now, blocking is like strata. It's like putting, it's putting uh, your participants in separate groups to help reduce variation that might have happened or might occur within your sample. So to give you an example here, let's say um, that we are testing a new diet pill and um, we might want to block that by females and males because females and males might react differently to um, to the diet pill that we give them. So we're gonna separate them into groups. We're gonna separate them into females and then separate them to males. And then from there, further set them into different treatment groups because there might be some, so, something about men and women that create a very more variation within those data that could cause us uh, to, um, you know, to come to the wrong conclusion. So we're gonna wanna block them um, to get a better idea of what's going on with this diet pill. Okay, so that's blocking. Let's let's take a look at an example of identifying some factors and levels in an experiment. 
So in a study done by a news organization on the effects of MSG, if you don't know what MSG, it's monosodium glutamate. We often see it in Chinese food. Uh, 125 participants were randomly assigned in two groups. One group had MSG in their Chinese food and the other did not. But afterwards, they were told that there was MSG and so they were going to ask whether they experienced any adverse symptoms. So we're really seeing if, um, if they did experience any adverse symptoms uh, from MSG or was it just a placebo effect? So let's first talk, uh, what are the factors? Well, the factor here is that they're given MSG um, because we're trying to study the effects of MSG. The levels of the factor is uh, given MSG or not given MSG. Those are really the only two groups that we created. And we only had one factor. So if we only had one factor and we had two levels, then we have at most two treatments because really if you think about it that's how many groups we end up having all together so treatments is the number of levels times the number of levels uh, times the number of blocks so um, you'll see this more when when i talk about um, experimental design and how do we design an experiment how to actually find the number of levels and treatments and we'll talk about this in class two with some problems all right so that's how we uh, identify the factors levels and treatments those are the four important principles of building a good experiment ready to go later